What is going on, everybody? It's your boy, John, and welcome back to Gearbox. So, today, before I talk about anything car-related, I want to say happy Memorial Day to all of my American uh, viewers out there. Obviously, a very special day uh, for our country and our freedom. I want to show my thanks for all of those individuals who have essentially gave the ultimate sacrifice uh, for the country we love and for our freedom. Um, so I do have Pearl Harbor on in the background. I got a nice rack of, well, let's go, let's take a, a rib check out here. Mm. Okay, so nice rib check, pork ribs, can't go wrong with them. Um, I know this is not a barbecue channel, but I do love smoking meats, as some might like to say. Ribs, brisket, pork butt, wings, I don't care. I love it all, clearly. Um, but anyway, happy Memorial Day, that's that. Um, now the main thing I wanted to talk about today, I just got a new set of tires on my car, and I figured, you know, let's go ahead and kind of let people in on the secret of what the right fitment is to run on on a wrx what tread should you be running um all this sort of stuff so let's go ahead as always gonna set up out in the garage we'll, we'll get a nice nice angle set up um and start talking about that because it is something where when i first bought my wrx i had no clue what the hell was going on um, I, I did have a lot of help along the way from people like fitmentindustries.com. If you're not familiar, go check them out. They saved my ass uh, when it came to fitment and just overall, uh, I guess, knowledge base uh, on wheels, tires, and suspension. So without further ado, let's go outside and let's get this thing started. All right, everyone. So as you can see, we are here with my beautiful wheel and tire setup. Um, and, and like I said, I just want to go over kind of what specs I'm running, uh, what tread I'm running, everything like that, because ultimately wheels, very important. Don't get me wrong. Tread, however, is arguably the most important part of the car as it's the four places that your car is touching the road. So your ass does not go off the road. Um, so I wanted to take a minute because I just got these new tires on here um, to discuss kind of what I'm running, what my thoughts are, everything like that. So to start off with the wheels, uh, we are running, and I know I've mentioned this in the past, but um, let me go ahead and go over that once again. We are running Avid 1 AV6s, 17 by 8 plus 35 offset. This is, as far as diameter and width goes, this is the same exact wheel as the OEM wheel that comes with the base model WRX. However, the offset is where this differs. Um, so when you talk about the OEM wheel, you're looking at a 17 by 8 plus 55 as, a pl as opposed to a plus 35. Now, you might be asking yourself, well, John, what does that get you? That gets you better offset that is going to push this wheel out a little bit further than stock as we all know and as we all hate i would assume um oem wheels for whatever reason they feel the need to just suck their, their damn wheels into the wheel well to an extent that i don't really understand i think it is super dumb and I do not understand it, I would argue that that is why probably most people get new wheels. The, the face design is one thing, but the actual offset is by far, in my opinion at least, um, the, the biggest reason to get new wheels on a WRX or any car for that example. Now, what I'll do, I'll insert some clips here of the offset uh, of kind of the, not poke, uh, it's, it's not a pokey setup, but I'll show you what that offset looks like. And, and once again, if you're not familiar with fitmentindustries.com, that is where I got these wheels from. 
Um, they've got the gallery, which you can look at a 2019 WRX uh, with this offset wheel and kind of see how it looks. But I'll, I'll go ahead and insert stuff right here. The offset and um, you know I, I personally think it's a, a great setup if you're not going for some super stancy boy fat lip you know negative offset type deal um, I think these are, are, are great looking wheels I mean essentially they're TE 37 knockoffs which yes I know wrap wheels versus the real thing yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I get it um, just not at a point monetarily <laughs> to where I'm gonna drop two grand on a set of wheels. Um, but anyway, I think they're phenomenal wheels. They look great. I mean, my entire car, as you all know, is kind of this gray black accent type deal. So obviously black wheels uh, is going to be a good fit. Um, so once again, wheels, pretty simple. All we're doing is just dealing with a little better offset kind of fitment type deal. Um, and, and really the reason I didn't change up any, you know, 17 to 18s or eight wides to eight and a half wides is I honestly just wanted to reuse the tread that came on the car. Yes, I know those Dunlops are trash, but at that point in time, I was brand new to my job. I didn't have a whole lot of money saved up. So I just wanted to get something quick, have that satisfaction and, and be on my merry way. Um, I still, once again, have the same setup as far as tire specs go. Uh, but I think it's great. I mean, for a daily driver, spirit of driving here and there, I don't know. You do you. Do you. I'm not going to sit there and drop another, you know, a couple hundred bucks on wider wheels or this or that. Definitely down the road, don't get me wrong, but just, just not now. Um, now, before we go on to the tread side of things, one thing I do want to mention, if you are not aware of this, please turn up the volume right now. Uh, uh. Okay, all-wheel drive cars, WRX, cannot, once again, cannot run a staggered setup. What do I mean by this? You have to run the same exact diameter on the front as you do to the back. I think you can run, I would assume you can run different widths of wheel, like most people will run wider wheels in the back and, you know, whatever. But square setups are what you're looking for on an all-wheel drive platform. There's a lot of mechanical shit that just goes wrong that I'm not going to get into here, but please look for a square setup. Um, if there's any other way to do it other than making it a rear wheel, rear wheel drive car, you let me know. But if you're running all-wheel drive, don't do it. Just don't do it. Anyway. Now on to the tread. Um, and, and once again, this is really the biggest piece of the puzzle here that's going to make your driving experience eh to, okay, yeah, this is a sick-ass car. Um, so right here, I just threw on, literally yesterday, Michelin Pilot Sport uh, 4Ss. Um, these are in 235, 45 by 17. Once again, these are the same exact spec wheels as far as width, aspect ratio, and diameter as the OEM Dunlops that come on the car. The difference being that the Michelin Pilot Sports are a bajillion times better wheel, or excuse me, tire, than the shitty Dunlops that come on the WRX from factory. Um, there's no doubt about it, just try it for yourself, I guarantee you, you will feel a difference. Um, so, really, as far as the reason why I went with these tires, um, you know, one, I'm not at a point where I'm going to put, like, summer tires on my car, um, mainly because I don't have a extra set of wheels. Um, I'm definitely going to get an extra set of wheels sooner, probably, rather than later, and get some actual summer, you know, track tires on there, just for shits and giggles, 
Um, but really, I needed a very good and obviously high-performing all-season tire, and these Michelin Pilot Sports are that. Um, some might argue they are top of the class as far as you know high performance all seasons, um, and, and I definitely had that experience in the you know I've probably driven on these tires for I don't know, four to five hours of driving, um, and, and I definitely feel that way. Um, they're a great tire. They're they're really not that expensive uh, to be honest, like 180 bucks a tire. Um, and on top of all of this, there's a Michelin plant right down the road from me here in Greenville, South Carolina. Um, so I kind of feel like I have to be a Michelin fanboy, but nonetheless, here we are. Now, I mean, I think after just driving on these tires, I, I really do think these are going to be like the best bang for your buck type of, if you're looking for an all season tire, you're not looking to slide off the road in the middle of an ice storm type deal, um, then you're going to be driving in the south, in the north, in the northeast, and out west, in Colorado, you know, I, I think these are going to be phenomenal, phenomenal tires for you. Um, obviously, if you live in Florida and it never gets below 50, go right ahead. Get some summer tires. I don't care. Um, I would love to do that, but I cannot. Because, um, in case you don't know, I live in the northwestern part of the state of South Carolina. And, yes, it's very warm. It's very humid. I'm sitting here sweating right now. Um, but we do get snow. Go back and check out some of my past videos there. Um, and, and it does get around freezing uh, a good bit. So I wasn't willing to risk the drivability aspect of it just because I want to be a hot boy and, and throw on some summer tires. Uh, once again, at least at this point, until I have a legitimate second set of wheels where I'm not remounting tires and shit like that. I can just stack them away and, and go from there. Anyway. All that being said, Michelin Pilot Sports, great. Now, the tire I was running before this was actually a Bridgestone Potenza. Um, same, same dimensions, 235 by 45 by 17. Those were also great, great tires. Um, I think, and I think as far as price range goes, they're probably in the same price range as well. Um, so if you're looking to have a good, solid, all-season tire, not going to break the bank, definitely, in my opinion, go the Michelin route, Pilot Sports. Uh, but do consider the Bridgestone Potenzas. Those were phenomenal. That was the tire I went to after I wore through the Dunlops on this car that came from the factory. And going from, once again, the shittiest tire available, those damn Dunlops, to the Bridgestone Potenza, it was like, I felt like I was driving a whole new car. I know that sounds like a crock of shit, but I promise you that is the case. So anyway, I just wanted to go ahead and just kind of let y'all know that, um, you know, kind of what I'm running, what I'm seeing, what I've felt, you know, my experience with it. I see no problem whatsoever running um, the, the stock 17 diameter wheels, um, although this wheel gap, it's a little uh, ridiculous, which go ahead and consider that an Easter egg uh, for upcoming videos. Um, and, and then same thing with the tire width and everything like that. You know, realistically, if, if you need anything more than a 235 on a daily driver, you're probably going to end up killing yourself. <laughs> I mean, if, if you're really going to push it that hard. Now, I know everyone wants a wide tire. Everyone wants to go for a you know, 275, 305 type deal, but that's just, I don't know, uh, not worth it to me, at least at this point, right? Um, so I want a reliable, you know, very cost-effective tire, um, and, and just, once again, a good daily drivable setup, and this is what I have found with these, um, you know, Avid wheels and the Michelin Pilot Sport 4Ss. Um, so anyway, guys, if you have any questions on wheel fitment, uh, you know, tire specs, anything like that, please leave them in the comments down below. Also, I, I would be remiss to say, go look at fitmentindustries.com. They have a great YouTube channel. They have a great website. Um, once again, they saved my ass um, as far as, you know, getting the right fitment and everything like that. So. Uh, don't don't hesitate to go over there ask them questions as well but I uh, really appreciate your time on you know the, this episode of gearbox today as always 
hit that thumbs up button, hit subscribe, hit the notification bell, you know the drill. Peace.